Bristol Cars is one of those companies surrounded by hearsay, mystery, drama and intrigue. As it happens, it also has a very special meaning for a close friend of mine, Anthony from the channel Sports and Touring, who's recently joined me on my new venture, JM and Friends. He's been helping me film this week, and there was one very, very good reason it was him that I had to bring along. 30 plus years ago, by my late teens, my parents had, at separate times, left. I was in London, alone, broke and homeless. Fortunately, things have changed a little bit since then. At the time, I needed somewhere I could work a lot of hours for whatever money I could get. The obvious answer was hotels. One of those hotels was a Hilton Olympia, London. Next door was Bristol Cars. Early in the morning, before each double shift, I'd stare into the showroom, daydreaming. On two pounds something an hour, between couch surfing and occasionally affording the dingiest of rooms, the idea of ever driving one of these elegant British motor cars seemed entirely hopeless. So when James asked me if I wanted to spend a few days away in the countryside filming two beautiful Bristols, it wasn't just that I wanted to, I had to. Wow, I am in a Bristol. This one's the 411, and I'll let James tell you all about this car, all the facts and figures on the main channel. But for today, I just want to take in the fact that I'm in a Bristol. I mean, I would walk past that showroom as a teenager, working in, frankly, not a great job. I used to look at those cars and think, wow, they're beautiful, and now, I'm in one. I mean, who knows? Maybe this was one that I actually saw in the showroom for sale at one time. Now, something else that makes this car special to me in particular is it was originally built in 1972, the year I was born. At this particular moment in time, this is the oldest car that I've ever driven. I'll tell you what, I wish I'd aged this well. This car is a 411, but it's the Series 6, so it was rebuilt many years later, and frankly, feels like a very modern car. It doesn't feel old. It's almost like having all of the best bits of the, the old with the new. Even on a day like today, this car's got air conditioning and it's blowing quite cool. The interior on this car is gorgeous. The dials, the wood. Obviously, this car has been beautifully restored to an even more modern state. It's got this little microphone here for the Bluetooth. Even the steering wheel in your hand feels new and modern. The leather's actually really nice. These particular seats are rather comfortable, I have to say. These seats, you probably would know already, uh, are not the original seats. They're wrapped away and uh, being preserved in plastic. Now it corners really quite well. Surprisingly well, actually. The steering feels great. Even though it feels like it's kind of floating along the road, just insulating you from the bumps, it's really, really quite pleasant. Now, for those of you that don't know me, I tend to prefer a raw, more edgy driving experience. And most of the time, the idea of getting into a comfortable cruiser like this just bores the living daylights out of me. But when you look at this car, the heritage, the design, the look, the feel, that quintessential Britishness about it. Can't help but love it. Now I think a car like this would probably appeal in the most part to an older generation who grew up idolizing these cars. I can imagine this 
potentially appealing to a new generation who see this and think, I want something different. And whether you spend the 150 plus thousand on this particular example or not, that would be down to you. But if you did, you'd certainly be getting something very rare and in my opinion, very, very cool. You know, this is one of those cars that feels like it should have been driven by either an East End gangster or by the coolest cop in a 1970s cops and robbers TV show. The V8 is just gorgeous. It rumbles and burbles. And when you want it, there's power. It's not big power, but there's just enough. Now, honestly, this is actually quite emotional for me. I'm sitting in it, I'm driving it. I never would have thought that that would have been possible. The mere fact that, okay, I don't own it. And I'm not sure that it was ever one of those cars that I said, I want to own one of those one day. But it's definitely the kind of car that was on my bucket list to drive. Wow, this is just sublime. Now I'm gonna to have to go back and pick up that little red pocket rocket and see what that's like. Now I'm in the 404. This particular car was built in 1955. So now this is officially the oldest car I've ever driven. I have to have the windows open because it's way too hot. The other car actually had air conditioning, this doesn't. It's a four speed manual with a very, very, very close reverse gear to the first gear. So you have to be quite careful. Now there's no synchro on the first gear. So the chances of you putting it into reverse is relatively low because you generally wouldn't even go for it until you're stationary. There's half a chance, of course, while stationary of accidentally selecting that reverse gear. But so far, I haven't made that mistake and I have had a little bit of a go in this car. Now, I thought, oh, this is the older car. I've driven mostly modern cars and I'm probably not gonna like this as much. I've had to put the window up, bit of a wind noise there. Now, I thought that this would be the car that I probably wouldn't like to drive. There's no power steering. It's got very rough gear shifts. Honestly, I love it. I think deep down, I'm a classic car lover. Now, a few of you may have watched previous videos where I've talked about how much I absolutely love a raw car. I like it when the car requires some skill to get the best out of it, where I like it to be a bit bumpy and the suspension to be hard and it to be a bit noisy. This car ticks all of those boxes, all of them. It's so much fun. And one of the big differences between this and say a modern manual sports car is this car isn't that fast, but it feels like you're going a million miles an hour as soon as you put your foot down. I love it. Now look, a car of this age is gonna have its flaws kind of cut out while we were sitting stationary on a hill waiting for our opportunity to do a hill start not even during the hill start before I'd even tried and uh, you know it splurts and splutters when you get started but honestly that's kind of what makes it cool but then you get on a beautiful country road and all you want to do Now that's the thing, this is proof that it's more fun to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow because in its time it would have been practically a race car but by today's standards obviously it isn't. But right now I feel like, I feel like I'm in a movie from 1957 and they'd probably call it Le Mans, the Bristol Victory. Now, I love the styling on both these cars, 
but there's something about this. I mean, you look at it, and if someone said to you that this car was half a million pounds, and bearing in mind there's literally only 40 of these in the world, if someone did say this was half a million pounds, looking at it, I believe it. The styling is gorgeous. I love it. Don't get me wrong, the 411 Series 6 is a lovely looking car, but this is the kind of car that I want to give a name, and I don't give my cars names. Ask anybody, I've never named any of my cars, but I want to give this one a name. Like, Cherry Blossom. Now I can't compare this to any car of its time because I haven't driven anything of this time. I can't really compare it to anything of today because, well, it's just not fair, is it? There's something special about this, just the way you feel in this car. I don't know, you feel like driving a piece of history. Probably because you are driving a piece of history, I suppose, but it's way better than I would have imagined a 1950s car to drive. The brakes are a lot better than I would have thought it would have been. The handling's a lot better than I would have thought it would have been. There's a little bit of play in the steering wheel, as you would imagine from a car from that era. And the steering wheel is huge. And believe me, when you're in a slow corner, you need it because of the lack of power steering. But it's just pure driving fun. Just uncompromised uncluttered, uncomputerized. A special thank you to SLJ Hackett for making today possible, to James for making the day happen, and to my son Damani for all his hard work behind the scenes, helping us film something that was, well, a very special moment for me. And thank you most of all for watching. Leave a comment below which was your favorite of these two. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button, give us a like. And on that note, I'm just gonna say bye-bye.